Uh, we're going to speak to uh, some of our colleagues this morning. It's the morning after the declaration, uh, which is really important uh, for the entire country. So we want to gauge the mood. Let's begin with Richard Kwejonyako, who's joining us via Skype. Richard, good morning. Congratulations to you. Hopefully, you've been able to have some five hours sleep. Yes, I'm at me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we, we thank God for your life. We thank you uh, for the massive work that you did as well, uh, Richard. But tell us, how is Cape Coast looking, at, looking like the morning after? Well, people are waking up to a bright new day. Yesterday in the evening when the announcement was made by the Electoral Commission Chair, uh, Cape Coast was thrown into wild tribulations from the length and breadth of the ancient capital. And it wasn't only Cape Coast but other uh, constituencies and district capitals as well. Uh, people uh, even made the, the elephants. There were some insignia of the elephant that people paraded through the principal streets of their respective uh, constituencies and towns. In Cape Coast, it was what people jubilated through, through uh, out the night and around 2 a.m. still people were jubilating. So it tells you the sense and the feel of how people were happy uh, that particular night. But while, while people were happy, others were also not happy. But those who were not happy stayed calm. Uh, they watched on as people uh, um, jubilated through and uh, across the streets of Cape Coast. So it was, it was really a moment that they really cherished. Mm. Uh, so what, what are you picking up? I mean, uh, those who are going back to Parliament in terms of the MPs who retained their seats and those who lost. There were people who didn't think they could lose, right, Richard? Exactly, exactly. So um, I was even surprised because if you look at some traditional seats that belong to some of the political parties and uh, they, they lost the seats, a seat uh, specifically, is the Chifu Etimokwa constituency, where from 1992 the NPP has not won before. By this time, uh, Samuel Ato Amwad, incumbent member of parliament, lost it to uh, someone he defeated uh, before, mm. and so the NPP won that seat. If you talk about the Upper Dintra and Upper Dintra East and West constituency, it wasn't surprising though, because from 1992, these people have continuously been with the NPP. If you look at Cape Coast North and South, I mean, Koku Wikinhagen retained the seat, but it wasn't really surprising because people think that Koku Wikinhagen, under uh, his leadership as a member of parliament, a lot has happened in Cape Coast. They speak about the Kotokaba market, they speak about um, four buses that is procured to. Um, uh, carry children from their houses to the schools and other things. One thing that was really surprising and uh, people did not anticipate that level of margin was the Cape Coast North seat where uh, Barbara Shea, of the NPP, picked uh, that seat. You know, that seat was also held by the NDC, uh, the, fe the first deputy speaker of parliament. Now it, it has gone to the NPP. If you look at the uh, KEA seat, um, Samuel Mills, the brother of the late president, uh, took it away. I mean, it was a slim margin between the NDC and the MPP and the PPP. And, and the PPP, the PPP uh, was trying hard, very hard, because that is the home constituency of the flag bearer of the PPP. They tried very hard that at least they could, if they did not win any seat in the in the country, they would win uh, the one for the KEA. So it was really moment, moment, moment that people were really happy. If you look at the Ascent Central, Ascent North, uh, Ascent South constituency. I mean, the NDC lost uh, one seat there, and the one in the Ascent North is not going back. As look at the Gumwa West, Gumwa Central, Gumwa East, uh, the NDP shot all these seats. If you look at uh, Prince Tapu Chasoya, the one we just spoke about, the Deputy Central Regional Minister, people attribute her faith to the enormous contribution personally is made in that uh, constituency. And so people were really not surprised about it. But apart from that, the Utu Senior West constituency was one of the constituencies that people were watching keenly. And uh, at the end of the day, it was one of the shocks because Hannah Tete is not going back to Parliament, but rather uh, to Nini and uh, who is going. And maybe Sawakunti also retained uh, his, uh, his seat. If we go to Jumapu, uh, people also attribute, just as uh, Kukui Wiki Hagan seat, people attribute uh, the win by Tishela Tufortson at his special vision, what he, he has specifically 
than in the constituency. So people that added some touch to the constituencies were the people, especially from the NDC, that won uh, those seats. So mm -hmm. probably it's been it's been uh, a mix a mixture of, um, of of feelings from these um, aspirants and contestants because some of the people that won the seat had accepted the seat before but have been denied the opportunity. So they feel that. This is the opportunity time for them also to go to Parliament. Mm. Well, now, if you look at some of the seats, especially after Cape Coast, you have the KEA, and you see some of um, the outcome of the elections and beyond. You, it, it, it beats the imagination of many people that uh, that wave of change was on the other side of the central region, but perhaps also not reflecting in, in, in some of the changes that traditionally we thought uh, should have been going the way of the MPP or the NDC? Well, if you look at uh, KEA, for example, KEA was not really too surprising because uh, from 1992, anyone that won the uh, KEA seat uh, was either from the NDC. The, time, the, the, the two times that the seat had gone elsewhere apart from the NDC was when Dr. Papa Kusindum contested on the ticket of the CPP, where the MPP did not field a candidate. And so he won based on his track record. There was that kind of measure that, uh, that made uh, Dr. Idom become the member of parliament. If you look at the circumstances within which Dr. Nana Atuata, the incumbent member of parliament, became the member of parliament, it was uh, an independent candidate that erupted from the National Democratic Congress after he lost the primaries. And so there was a split of the votes of the National Democratic Congress before Nana Atwata could go uh, to become the member of parliament. So any time it has gone elsewhere has been some moments where there have been some uh, differences or some changes in, 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 in the arrangement from a political party or the other. But people were really anticipating that the PPP um, uh, candidate was going to win, looking at what Dr. Papakwe Sindom, Group Indom, and the PPP had done. You know, Dr. Papakwe Sindom really campaigned in his own home constituency and was really, uh, they were looking up to uh, that seat as a form of consolation from the hard work and the tiring effort they put in, in, uh, in, in throughout their campaign. But so that was, was really not surprising. The surprises came uh, along the coastal belt of the central region because they have a lot of them had been with the NDC for a long time. If you look at the Kunfi, uh, the home uh, the home constituency of the late president John Evans Satamos, people never anticipated that that wind of change was going to blow across that constituency. And yes, indeed it did. I mean, the MPP candidate won eventually won the day, but. The candidates, the, the NDC candidate has been attributing that one to uh, some machinations by the people that contested him during the NDC primary. So it wasn't really surprising we should talk about it. Putu Afinyamakin had really stamped his authority on the ground. He has been campaigning vigorously and he's been doing some kind of works in that particular constituency. If you talk about Aguna East, Quinstapuki Asoya's uh, constituency, People not, were not really anticipating some change, and people were really surprised at the margin that she even gave uh, her opponent because, you know, she's been contributing uh, graciously to that particular constituency. She's been feeding uh, BEC candidates when they start the exam. Uh, she feeds them till they finish. She's been uh, using her personal funds in doing a lot of things in the constituency. So some were not really too surprised, but others, I mean, they were surprised, like Chufu Etimokwa. It was really surprising because <laughs> that constituency would never have voted for uh, the NPP. But yes, they did. And this time, there is a new candidate and the incumbent is not going back to parliament. So, Richard, uh, finally, is there a massive rally? Any celebrations or, you know, any sad moments massively happening in Cape Coast today? Well, the celebrations are isolated. I mean, they are done on a constituency basis. I mean, the candidates that, for, for instance, in the Cape Coast South uh, constituency, Ricky Hagan won, but I doubt if he is happy because the party uh, lost. And he had to really put in some massive, massive effort. The difference was not that huge. He nearly lost the contest. And so for uh, the people, some of the people that won, it is not jubilation for them. Uh, because uh, before we, they went into the contest, 
the NDC had 16 seats, while the MPP had um, eight seats. But at the end of the day, the NDC, uh, the MPP gained 11 more seats in addition to their eight seats that they held. So if you look at the celebrations that have been dotted uh, around, I mean, they, they are constituency based and have not had any uh, hints or plans by the regional outfit of the uh, new patriotic party of a massive rally or a thank you something. Maybe it will come later. But for now, uh, the jubilations have been from one constituency to the other, depending on the candidate that one. I appreciate your work and the efforts that you put into this coverage. We salute you. Thank you so much. Enjoy your Saturday. Hopefully we'll Enjoy your day. match. <laughs> 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 That's our colleague in the central region, Richard Kwejanyako. Uh, he led the coverage there for us. Mm. Thanks to Richard Kwejanyako. And Roland, uh, uh, it looks like the central region also contributed uh, very much to the win of the NPP because they won so many seats in the central region this time around. Yes, they did. And uh, you just have to look at the margins to get to know. Some of them were very close. Mm. And so it means that the NDC can recover from some of them. But it also gave an indication of how swing a region the central region is, and uh, how, in addition to the greater Accra region, they tend to dictate who is likely to become the ultimate winner when the yeah. results start trickling in. And from the beginning, when the results started trickling in, you could have a sense mm. that, yes, uh, it was tilting towards a certain direction. Uh, my, it, it's not a difficulty, it's, it's just a, a surprise was that many of um, the researchers and the posters and even for us who were observing didn't pick up some of the signals from the ground. So you, you get to find that you go to most of the constituencies, especially along the coast, and they, are, they were predominantly NDC. And so you could say, based on the responses you were getting, NDC yeah. was likely to win some of those seats and the turn out not to be that way. Yeah. So it could be maybe within the last month of the contest, maybe the winners pushed a lot more hard than they, they, they usually would have, or perhaps they devised a better strategy and tried to convince mm. people. Because I remember one of the, 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 the constituencies along the coast, and I want to mention in Accra, um, we, I went to do some research for FM, and I picked up that even the candidate that won, was uh, was when he went to the polling areas mm. of the NDC was preaching skirt and blouse. Oh, yeah. wow! Yeah, but it also means that the the losers or the NDC candidate didn't pick those signals up. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, it was such a serious day yesterday. As, uh, half of the time, a lot of people were tensed, but later in the evening yesterday, we heard the big elephant crossed. Dubai. We are lucky we were in Dubai at the time. We'll bring you <laughs> footage of that. All right, so this is our Dubai, obviously, at Sekel. Uh, and as part of the celebrations, they decided let the elephant cross our little Dubai here in Ghana. So that's it, the elephant uh, with obviously supporters of the NPP who are uh, who were excited yesterday that the president-elect uh, is their candidate and other than Kwe Kofuado and they decided to take their celebrations to the circle interchange, the new interchange uh, known as our Dubai. So. <laughs> Very, very interesting. And so we also bring you a lot more reactions from the Kwame Nkrumah um, interchange area. We used to call it circle, and many of us uh, know it. But the commuters were in jubilant mood, and we know that many of them also <coughs> were accompanied by supporters of um, the party, the MPP, and those who were somehow the neutrals in the in, in the voting process in itself. So here's our reports. Enjoy it. We are the Kwame Kuma Interchange, and I can tell you there's a lot of excitement. People reacting to the victory of the MPP presidential candidate. Uh, people have also decided to celebrate it in this way. Uh, display. 
you could see party supporters trooping all the way to Nima to the residence of the NPP presidential candidate now, president elect. We want to speak to a few people. Okay, so we want to move uh, onto the street right now to give you a sense of what is happening. A lot of motor riding activities, a lot of uh, uh, car racing and what have you. Uh, people can't just hide uh, the excitement, how excited they are about the victory of the NPP presidential candidate. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Mama. I never thought my Nanado would take the Mama. But God Mama. told me Nanado is going to Mama. make it simple. Mama. Okay, so he says God told him Nanado is going to win and it's going to be a landslide victory. And uh, they're obviously excited about this. We want to find out how business is also going for people who are selling here at the Kwame Kumai touching, especially for those uh, who are selling party paraphernalia right now. How business is going? Well, she tells me she's made a lot of profit today, especially when it comes to NPP paraphernalia because of the victory. Uh, we still want to move on and find out from uh, some other uh, traders. We love you, Leonardo. We love you so much. We are happy that you are in. And we know everything's going to be perfect for us. We love you. We love you so much, All right. All right. Thank you very much. So that is the situation here at the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange. We are going to continue to bring you uh, a lot of the reactions in town uh, just minutes after the declaration by the EC chairperson that Nanado Dankwe Kufuado has won the presidential elections and is now president-elect of the Republic of Ghana. My name is Ernest Menu for joining Anes Meido, and not too far away, just some few meters away, is um, Kaneshi. And uh, before you get to Kaneshi, is the Obechebi runabout. And of course, we know that there was supposed to have been an interchange also built around there. I hope that Nanado will do that. <laughs> so here's another report from Kaneshi. So we are here at Kaneshi. Uh, this is uh, the mode, I'm told that's the name of the area. There's so much excitement. We are very happy. Nana has won for us, so we are happy. What are your expectations? We, whatever he promised, we wish he would do for us. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we can speak. I will be surprised if Nana didn't win, okay? <laughs> Ghanaians have decided wisely in their minds. And I believe Ghanaians, and I refer them for today, and no greets to them. Thank you very much. Tell them we are really enjoying. We just love everything about our good father. We love you. We love you. It is definitely, it is definitely full of uh, excitement right here at uh, the mall uh, inside Kandeshi. I'm going to speak to uh, this gentleman here. He's going to tell us uh, how business is doing for him uh, since the victory of the NPP. Tell us how business is going. Well, business is not going bad. As you can see, there are a lot of people around, and they are having fun, and they are buying drinks. They're all happy Nanado is won. And that's it. Who I understand is a supporter or a member of the NDC. Yeah, yeah, uh, they yeah, have yeah. just lost the elections, but he's here also celebrating. Uh, you should be uh, grieving by now. Why are you here jubilating? And we are one Ghana. 
no matter what happens, whether Nana is president or not, we are one Ghana. I'm, I'm happy there is no there is no war in the country. I can go about and do my duties. Whatever I want to do, I can go about doing it without fear or favor. This is a peaceful election. And so we must all jubilate because Ghana has won. Let me say he's not the only one, though. I have spotted a few other people uh, who tell me they are supporters of the NDC, but they are excited about Nanado's victory, Nana Ekufado's victory, and uh, they are not hesitating at all to celebrate uh, with, with, with the party. Uh, supporters, they claim to be supporters of the NDC, but that irrespective of that, they want to celebrate with their friends in the NPP. Um, celebrating together, because Ghana has won, so we are all winners. Man, it's all about togetherness. Whether NDC or MPP, it's all about togetherness. Trust me. Yeah, I'm, I'm for NDC, but trust me, what went on, I'm very proud of my president. Trust me, I'm very proud of Okay, so for them, there's in the spirit of unity, the thing that at the end of the day, Ghana has come out of a peaceful election. And so irrespective of whoever uh, wins the presidency, uh, Ghana still needs to celebrate. That's what they're joining. They are friends. They are friends. So interesting ramifications and also outcomes and the reactions of um, various um, well, sections of the Ghanaian electorate or the population towards the victory, but mainly one of uh, jubilation and it's logically so. But um, one of our regulars on many of our platforms and also who speaks in the media, very vibrant, uh, a former executive. Uh, Chief Executive of the Food and Drugs Authority, but currently Member of Parliament for Ayawaso West Wagon and uh, MP elect as well, is Emmanuel Chramanting Ejakun. He is on the line. A very good morning to you, sir, and congratulations. Good morning, good morning. Yeah. You sound tired. Logical. Hello? You sound tired, and I'm saying it's logical. Yeah. Yes, 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 oh, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, we know that the University of Ghana, that's the campus, is uh, where you get the bulk of your votes from. But you do a calculation of um, the percentages that came in. You, you seem to have um, uh, gone upwards and, 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 and you just went beyond the precincts of the institution and, and went into the communities. How did you do that? Well, uh, uh, thank you for having me on your show this morning and let me use this opportunity to say uh, hello to, to listeners and viewers. Uh, uh, I want to say on behalf of, of the president-elect and on behalf of my party that we are a most grateful party. We are extremely grateful about what the Canadians have done. Uh, like like, like uh, president-elect Akufa has said yesterday, we will not disappoint you. Having said this, uh, uh, let me say that yes, we agree. We have we have had a tradition of doing extremely well on the university campuses. But like you're saying, it is beginning to spill into into where quote unquote traditionally we say we have not done well. Uh, it is all because I, I think that we clearly understood our mission as uh, representatives of the people. Uh, and we engage the people. When the people see you, when the people realize that you are interested in them, even though you might not be able to provide all the answers uh, that they require, but see the effort, they see the willingness, uh, people get touched. They see the, they see the transparency, they get touched, and uh, they will vote for you. I think that uh, the good people of Ayawa Suez will not. So that the MP was genuinely interested in what was happening to them, was was genuinely making efforts to improve their lives, even though I am not an agent for development. Whatever we could do, wherever we could, whatever we could say to ensure that uh, their lives improved, we, we tried very hard to do this. And I think that uh, as a result of this, uh, they, they voted massively for 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 the NPC. Now, at field, and I mean that just beyond the boundaries of your constitution, uh, your constituency, we, we, we have witnessed 
some level of uh, a call for change, and, and, and that was manifest in the votes that were cast by the electorate, uh, perhaps uh, that was significant enough. And we've witnessed that before in our country in 2000 and 2008. How does that yeah. measure the level of expectation on your party? Well, uh, let me say this. Uh, I, I think that the ruling government did not, did not, did not fully understand the level of dissatisfaction and antipathy. I am happy that we have a, 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 a change, an uh, interchange over, 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 over. I'm happy that one is being constructed over uh, at Kaswa. But you see, the people's lives just got worse off. I, I, I mean, it, it was horrendous. And I think that that is exactly what uh, the NPC President John Mahama and the NPC was not understanding. Every day I came on your program, I cited my sister Yabidu, who who was planted at uh, on Lagos Avenue in East Lagos. Very typical, very, very typical. So I said, yes, they were seeing the rules, they were seeing the hospital, but their lives were just getting worse. And you see, like they said, we said it, but they took it from us. You matter people at the end of the day who are made president because of the people. And if the people's lives just keep getting worse, there is no way they can retain you. Uh, for me, you know, let me say this without equivocation. If the NDC had lost, if the NDC had won, I probably would have just packed out of politics. It should have meant that in this country we were dignifying corruption, we were dignifying stealing, we were dignifying banditry. But, you know, I, I am so happy as a Ghanaian this morning. I am extremely satisfied as a Ghanaian. It has become obvious to me that the good people of this country will not dignify wrong. They voted against the corruption. They voted against the incompetence. They voted against the plain thing. Yeah, uh, let's yeah. talk about Yabedu. What's going to change in her life? Oh, Yabedu's life will improve. Yabedu can go to uh, Ligon Hospital and they will, tell, they will not tell her that and cover up. When Yabedu's son Goku is not well, and Yabedu takes Goku to Lagon Hospital, they will not tell Yabedu that, uh, they will not take the NHRA card and tell Yabedu that and cover. If Yabedu's son Goku needs an IV trip, Goku will be given an IV trip. If Yabedu's son needs an, a parental, a, a parental uh, an injection, uh, uh, antibiotic, they will give Goku the parental uh, antibiotic and it will be paid for. Okay. Yabedu's son is in secondary school. Yabedu does not need to mortgage anything to pay the school fees. Yabedu's son, Kweku, will have free secondary school education. Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Jaku, we'll leave it here. I, I, I like very much the fact that you understand and you still remember the promises because a lot of you, a lot of people will hold you accountable to the promises that you've made. We say congratulations again. Mm, Roland, but but hold on. Yabedu, Mr. Chamantine, did <laughs> she really exist? Yabedu exists. Hmm. All right. Yabedu exists. I'll take you. I'll bring Yabedu to the studio one of these days. No, no. Take me to her. No, no. I, I, want, so, I, want, I want to have a bite of a roasted plantain. Oh, I'll, I'll bring you up and do. I'll bring you up and do. No, the, don't the, bring. I want, I want us to go. <laughs> oh, right, that would be okay. Mr. Jaffa, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Enjoy your victory. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Emmanuel. Tremateng Ejakon, who's retaining that seat in the Ayawaso West Wagon constituency. We'll be speaking to a lot more of, your, uh, of our members of parliament right here on our show. Uh, still to come, we'll still gauge the mood uh, around the country. We'll still find out if people are celebrating or if people, you know, are mourning, if you like. Uh, but tell us, what do you think about the decision that the entire country has made? We've got a new president, the president-elect, in the name of Nana Adudankwe Kofuadu. Send us your thoughts on 0560 That's the WhatsApp number. Uh, up next, we speak to one of our favorite, Mr. Adams Wumotawakilo, uh, who's member of parliament, Oh, okay, so we don't have him 
on the line yet, but he's retained that seat in Damongo. We'll speak to him uh, when we can. Uh, we'll speak to him when we can. But I was running you through other names. Uh, a big win for former Works and Housing Minister Boniface Sadiq in Medina over uh, throwing Amadou Sorogo, uh, who's been there for quite some time in Medina. Uh, so Boniface uh, Sadiq coming from the north and winning the seat outrightly. Uh, and here's another one in the Shai Osudoku constituency. Uh, this was one constituency that we suddenly had to pay attention to because the person who won, Linda Oklu, remember her late, her husband died in a motor accident. He was standing on the ticket of the NDC in the Shai Osudoku constituency. Unfortunately, he died in that motor accident, but his wife, Linda, said, no way, my husband's vision has to live on. And she decided to take the mantle and stand uh, as member of parliament and there we have it she won the seat congratulations to linda oklu uh, and you know keeping the memory of her late husband alive let's cross over to ivy satoji uh, who is in ho right now ivy good work morning, over the days morning. congratulations to you good morning ivy i hope you're well i am well just that we are all tired yeah know? i can feel it in your voice so one more report for us just before you <laughs> take a longer sleep <laughs> What's the mood today? What's the mood today in Ho? Well, well, you know, uh, the mood, some people are happy, some are not. Obviously, the NDC supporters are not happy. Uh, um, when you go to town, you realize that the town is, um, the streets is virtually empty, uh, with many people in their homes, uh, some going about their normal businesses. And then you will see some MPV supporters still in town, you know, jubilating, and then also um, some in the party office and that thing. And now, uh, what is happening here? The market women, uh, I spoke to them, and what they told me was they are very sad because and they said lost because they have started construction work and the whole main market, okay? And so by the end they say. So with this, they are feeling that or what they feel is the MPP may not be able to continue with the project for them. And many of them uh, normally don't have shares to sell, uh, okay? And so normal, they, they, they normally sell under the sun uh, with small shares. So they want uh, the government, they want the MPP to remain in power so that they, they can continue with the project such a few months ago. But with this, they said they are hopes. They, they, they don't think it will happen. Mm -hmm. So that is the main problem in whole town especially. But talking about the southern part, uh, the Aplau, Ketu South, Ketu North, Keta, and the rest, uh, it, it's really sad. Many people are sad because of what happened. They can't believe that uh, the NDC uh, lost this time around, especially President Mahama. Mm -hmm. They can't just believe and most of them, looking at them, you realize that uh, it, it, they can't bear the loss. So, uh, but some of them, a few of them who are here, and people who are happy, they said what they wanted, all this while was changed, and so they are gotten it. And now uh, they are happy. So that is the mood in town. Mm. Ivy, 50, 50. Yeah. Uh, so, Ivy, do you feel people telling themselves, oh, I, I wish I had voted, because we're told that turnout was rather very low? Yes, yes, yes. People did. People, uh, those who couldn't vote were like, oh, I wish, I wish I, I, I voted. I wish I did. Uh, my vote would have done something, you know. Many people regretted not voting, especially uh, those who feel that the, the NDC took them for the vote mm -hmm. for granted, okay. Uh, they wish they had voted to, to, to maybe make some uh, difference in a snack way. But it, it, it's too late now. They just have to for the next four years. And mm. some are saying that they, will, they, they want to see what the NPP will do this stuff around. And they want to see if the NPP will take care of the voter region as promised, especially the harbor they promised in the Keta municipality and then the one district, one district. And the free education as well. They want to see if NDC will 
uh, the NPP will continue with the project started by the NDC, especially the airport, the aerodrome as well, get the market and some roads, the uh, construction uh, was started by the NDC. Mm. All they want is for the NPP to continue with this project. Right. Uh, that is all they want. Okay. And then, so they are hoping for the best. All right. Ivy Satoji, thanks a lot. Enjoy your Saturday. Have the longest sleep ever. We appreciate yes, your okay. efforts in this coverage. That's our colleague Ivy Setoji, who's been reporting for us from Ho in our special coverage of election 2016. This is a special programming uh, today right here on the Joy News channel. It's some 52 minutes after 7, uh, and we're continuing. We're engaging the mood the day after uh, the declaration, the acceptance speech, uh, and, you know, President Mahama also given in. Uh, in that speech there. Mm. Well done. And uh, we know that we have to prepare for news file and some technical details also we need to take care of. So we'll be go going off in a bit, but again, before we go off, we'll have to bring you that very, uh, some part of the speech by Nanado Dankwe Kufuado and fill you in with most of the things that he said mm. by way of um, the victory speech of the president-elect of the Republic of Ghana. But before we do that, we have some messages. We do, Roland, a few of your messages. Uh, this one says, you guys have, ex uh, have extremely amazed me, I guess. You helped uh, Ghana win. And Andrew is a character. Sherifi Sadat from Cherepone sending us that message. Uh, this one says, I think the people of Ghana have taken a positive decision by choosing a new leader. Uh, to me, JM has done his best, but his own people never helped me. Uh, to, to the president-elect, uh, he shouldn't forget teachers in our institutions. Uh, and this one also says, this is an opportunity for Nanado to prove beyond reasonable doubt that he is uh, anti nordna incorruptible, arrogant, etc. That's from Ibrahim sending that message. This one says, good morning, Mama V. Roland. Uh, this is Pakujo uh, at Wager. Oh, Pakujo, good morning to you. It was good seeing you uh, at Joy at the Mall. Paco just says, we're all happy for the second independence uh, taking for us by the NPP. But of course, we will hold seriously, uh, we'll hold them accountable to every word of promise and more to really make a significant improvement. Thank you, the media, for your enormous support to this development. Good morning once again. Good morning to you, Paco Joe in Wager. Uh, maybe perhaps a very last one. We appreciate you've sent lots of messages. Hashtag join news from now to January with a trainee team. Teachers expect the former government to release the feeding grants before their exits in office. Uh, Al uh, Alawa is loaded, and I can't wait to receive it. Hashtag join news. Uh, this one says, good morning, Roland Mamavi. My name is Richmond from Aflao. Uh, now, God did his part. It's time for Nana to do his part for him not to offend God, thanks. All right, more messages on WhatsApp. But here's what's going to happen today. We've got special programming. So there will be time for us to share your views with the entire world. Uh, there will be social media time here on our network. Uh, but we know that news fair comes up at 9 a.m. And we're all looking forward to the panel and the conversations, great conversations uh, that's going to happen on Newsfile, definitely related to the 2016 elections hosted by Samson Ladi Ayenini. We've got five more minutes to go, perhaps, Roland. This way we have to say thank you. Yes, and we also have to say thank you for being with us. We know that after Samson, there will be a, a lot more programming on the channel, and you have always been a partner in all the things that we do on the channel. As always, for those listeners, also on Joy FM, as well as the Allied stations, and those who tend to be with us when we stream live on our pages, we say kudos to all of you. Mm. We couldn't have done what we did without you watching and sticking and staying. Well, we have to end the show with, um, yeah, with a speech again by the president-elect, mm. Nana Adodankwe Kufuado. Before we do that, though, we want to say thank you uh, to our directors, who've been with us this morning, and of course, Patricia Osei, and our lead producer, uh, Ekol Sam Derek. So, Gomez and Oshe Vincent, thanks a lot. Our next production will be at nine. Until then, we've got some playbacks. <sighs> okay, so we'll bring you the graphics of the winners, and then we'll bring you that speech by the president-elect, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado.